By the end of this video, you will be able to design a long tail pair differential amplifier with an emitter current source. And you will also be able to control the gain of the amplifier with a voltage source. Now designing circuits is only one part of the journey. You also need to bring them to life. And for that, you have the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. I highly recommend PCBWay. They make ordering prototypes and assembled boards fast, affordable and hassle-free. So whether you're just testing your very first design or scaling up to full production runs, PCBWay offers a wide range of options to fit your needs. The easy to use online platforms let you upload your Gerber files, select your board specification and get an instant quote. Plus, they provide excellent customer support to help you through the process. I've used PCBWay myself for many projects and their quality and turnaround times are impressive. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and supporting makers like us. Now let's get started with the video. We are answering question 2.28 from the Art of Electronics. We will ultimately design a amplifier whose gain is controlled by a externally applied voltage. But for the first part of the question, we need to begin by designing a long tailed pair differential amplifier with a emitter current source and no emitter resistors. So this is undegenerated. We are using a 15 watt power supply and we are setting the IC current for each transistor to 100 microamps. Our RC resistor is also given as 10 kilo ohms. We need to calculate the voltage gain from a single ended input to a single ended output. So first of all, let's draw the circuit. So for the question, we are going to have two power rails, minus 15 volts and plus 15 volts. We're going to need uh, two NPN transistors and two resistors for the RC side. We don't have to have both of these resistors, but I'll always include them. And finally, we're going to need a current source. We do need to design this current source for the question. One of the inputs is grounded and the other input has a signal coming inside. Now we know the current down here is 100 microamps and the current down the other uh, NPN transistor is also 100 microamps. And we're going to have 200 microamps going down the current source. RC is 10K and we are going to take the output from this side and we are going to take the output from here. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the intrinsic emitter resistance, which is RE, and that is equal to VT divided by IC, where VT is equal to 25 millivolts, and we know what IC is because it's given to us, so we can calculate RE as 25 milli divided by 0 0.1 milli, so the two millis cancel, which gives us a RE value of 250 ohms. And RE is the intrinsic resistor of the emitter. Our equation for the gain is equal to RC two times RE plus RE. Now you can see we don't have any resistor over here. So that section over here is going to be zero. So the gain is going to be equal to 10K divided by two times 250, which is basically 10,000 times 500. So this gives us a gain of 20. Now what we haven't done in this circuit, now what we haven't done in this circuit is calculate or design our current source. So what we can do is use a simple um, NPN transistor current source. So something like this. So you would replace this current source with this current source over here. We know the voltage over here is going to be 0 0.6 volts. So we can use the knowledge from whatever this voltage is minus 0 0.6 so that we know what VE is and we can calculate and set the current for the circuit. So we have a 15 volt power supply over here and we connected this to ground. We can also connect this to the negative power supply so we can connect this um, to minus 15 volts if we need to. Now it would be better if we can use a zener or something like that over here. Let's say we use a 5.1 volt zener over here. So that will set the base voltage to 5.1 volt. So we've used a 5.1 volt zener we know that the uh, voltage at the bottom is minus 15 volts. This voltage over here is going to be 5.1 volts above that. So that's going to be 9.9 .9 volts on the base. And on the emitter, we're going to have 9.9 .9 plus 0 0.6. So that's equal to 10.5. 
or minus 10.5. I think there should be a minus sign over here. So let's change that because the voltage is going down. So we have on the emitter. So on the emitter, we have 10.5 volts and we want a current of 0 0.2 milliamps. So we can use Ohm's law to calculate what the resistor is going to be. So we have 10.5 divided by 0 0.2 milli, which gives us which gives us a resistor of 52.5 kilo ohms. Now, just looking at that number again, I think it may have been better to use a smaller uh, Zener diode over here. So instead of um, 5.1, maybe we could use a 3.3 or a 1.24 volt reference or something like that. So that means that we'll get a smaller resistor for the, for the emitter resistor over here, which would be better. But the circuit will work and you'll get um, 200 microamps going down this. So I've drawn the circuit we've designed using LT Spice and we can simulate this to see if it functions as we need it to. So the first thing, um, let's just check the current. So I may have made a small error in the calculation for this resistor. So I said the voltage across this resistor was 10.5, but in fact, that wasn't the case. Um, just because uh, the emitter is uh, minus 10.5, but the second uh, junction of the resistor is at minus 15. So we need to take the difference of the two values. Minus 15 volts here and we have minus 10.5 volts here. So we have 4.5 volts across the resistor. So we should have used 4.5 volts in the calculation rather than 10.5. So with a voltage of 4.5, we get a resistor value of 22.5K. So we are getting approximately uh, 200 microamps flowing through this junction over here. And most of that is gonna be coming through this direction and some of it is going to be through the base, but we can ignore it because it's very small. Then half of that is gonna flow through this side and the other half is going to be from this side. And obviously we're taking our output from here. So now let's just look at the gain. My input signal is 0 0.2 peak to peak and my output signal is 37.5 millivolts peak to peak. So V out divided by V in gives us the gain and we have a gain of roughly 18.75 for the circuit. What you can notice is that we have a massive offset so the midpoint for our signal is sitting at 14 volts, which obviously is determined by um, this resistor and the current flowing through it. The last thing that we need to do for this circuit is change it so that we can control the gain using a external voltage source. So changing the circuit for that is very simple. What we're going to do is replace all of this with a voltage source that's coming in over here. Let's call this VC. We can set it to whatever we like, not a sine wave, but this voltage source will control the current that's flowing through here. And for this voltage source, we need to give a approximate formula for the gain as a function of the controlling voltage. So the controlling voltage being this one over here. So let's derive the equation now. So you can see you got Q1, Q2, Q3. So what we're going to do first of all is start by looking at the um, controlling voltage over here and how that affects the current. So IE, and this is for Q3, is equal to VC minus VBE divided by R1. But going forward, R1, I'm going to call RE, which is the emitter resistor for Q3 over here. So RE. We also know the gain equation, which is equal to RC divided by two times RE plus RE. Now what this RE is referring to is a emitter resistor that would be over here. Obviously we don't have any, so that's going to be equal to zero. And this RE is the intrinsic emitter resistance. So we can rewrite this equation as RC to RE. We also know that RE is equal to VT divided by IC. This IC is the current that's flowing into this, um, this transistor over here and this transistor. So we know that it's going to be equal to half of this current over here, which is the current that's flowing down this direction. So we can rewrite this equation as Vt divided by Ie divided by two or two Vt Ie. Now that we have Ie in this equation, we can rewrite Re as equal to Vc minus Vbe and because VB is fixed, we can ignore it. So I'm going to get rid of it for now. So we got this VBE we can get rid of. This VBE we can get rid of because it's a fixed value and it's not going to change. 
So now that we've included IE into this equation, we can replace this IE with that one. We can replace this IE with this equivalent. So RE is equal to 2 VT divided by VC divided by RE, which we can rewrite as 2 VT RE divided by VC. Next, we can put this RE back into this equation over here. So then the gain is equal to RC 2 2 VT RE divided by VC, which is RC 4 VT RE VC. Now, if you wanted to keep the VBE inside, you can. Um, I've just removed it because it has a small effect on the current and it's not going to be significant. So let's test this circuit to see how um, it affects the gain. So I'm going to change the controlling voltage into a sine wave with a DC offset of 5.1 volts and a amplitude of let's say 0 0.4 and a frequency of 1 hertz. I've changed my input signal to a DC voltage of 1 millivolt. So when this signal is not moving, and let's try that first actually. So 5.1 volts over here, 1 millivolt, we get a output. Obviously ignoring the offset, um, we had a gain of 20 over here. So I'm just going to do a signal so we can actually see the gain. And let's just look at the V out. You can see that the output is roughly 38 millivolts and the input is 2 millivolts. So we still have a gain of 20 with this circuit. We have a current of approximately 200 microamps. Next, what I'm going to do is turn this controlling voltage into a sine wave with a DC offset of 5.1. And let's have a sine wave with a frequency with an amplitude of 0 0.4 and a frequency of 1 hertz. So just look at this signal. You can see it's going down, up and down twice. So that means that our output should also be changing with that frequency. So you can see that the gain is being affected. Obviously, it's, it's difficult to look at this um, output. I have recreated the circuit for three different input control voltages. So you can see I got 4 volts, 5.1 here and 6 volts here. The output from this circuit is A, this output is B, and this output is C. We have the same input going to all the differential amplifiers on the circuit and the simulation. I'm measuring the output voltage peak to peak, and then I'm going to calculate the gain. I will place that against the equation that we calculated to see how closely they correlate. So you can see for A with 4 volt input, the peak to peak is 28 millivolts. For B, the peak to peak voltage is 37 millivolts and for C the peak to peak voltage is approximately 45 millivolts. So let me put that on a Excel sheet next to the gain calculation as well to see how closely they correlate. So this is the control voltage. This is the gain with the equation that we calculated and this is excluding the VBE voltage and this gain calculation is including the VBE voltage as well. This is the gain that we got from our simulation so 6 volts 5.1 and 4 and you can see when you include the VBE voltage you, you get a much closer approximation to the real answer or to the simulated answer. Maybe you want to leave the VBE value in the equation. So for 4 volts we should have a we have a calculated gain of 15. The actual gain is 18. For 5.1 the calculated gain is 20 which is what we were aiming for so at least that correlates and the simulated gain is 18.8. Now, if you remember, before we did the voltage control circuit, it was lower anyway. And at 6 volt input, our gain goes up to 22.5. So we have built a, so looking at those results, we have built a differential amplifier with a voltage controlled gain. I think this will sufficiently answer the question for the book. But if you have any feedback for me in terms of anything we can have in addition to this, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.